InfoWarsStore.com. Is throwing a snowball worthy of a felony charge? Police in Chicago seem to think so, as a 13-year-old has been charged with aggravated battery to a police officer for allegedly tossing the icy projectile, a charge that the boy denies. In Georgia, no one is denying that a 17-year-old future Marine was killed when he opened his front door for an officer. Witnesses say that the officer, there to serve a warrant for the boy's father, fired upon the teen who was holding a Nintendo Wii controller. Police claim that the teen was holding a gun at the time of the incident. The shooting is still under investigation. Police in Hawthorne, California, beat a deaf man, reportedly mistaking his hand signs for aggression. Officers thought the hearing-impaired gentleman was stealing his own property and grabbed his arms, impairing his ability to communicate with his hands. The man was then tased and beaten by police, according to his attorney. We've seen that even filming police can get you into trouble with reports of alleged assault from police for the simple act of filming police activities. Back in 2011, InfoWars reported on how police threatened to throw a man in prison for life for daring to film his encounter with the authorities. Eventually, the charges were dropped and the Supreme Court upheld the right to film police. Even though this right was solidified some years ago, Last year, women in Illinois were arrested for filming the installation of a smart meter, a smart meter that they did not desire. And on this topic of cameras, it's a good thing that cameras were rolling last week when a jogger was taken into custody by the Austin Police Department. The young woman was supposedly uncooperative when police attempted to intercept her for the heinous crime of jaywalking. Eyewitnesses state that the officers grabbed the woman from behind, instigating her standoffish attitude. Police dispute that claim, saying that the woman knew that it was officers who were approaching her. Reports state that she was officially arrested for failing to identify to the officers. And on the topic of APD, this is the same police department who shot an unarmed man in the back last year while fleeing away from an officer. They say that the man was allegedly at a bank to commit a fraud, but even if he was, that is not a capital offense. But it's not all bad. Massachusetts police recently threw a surprise party for an autistic boy who had few friends. And we see these from time to time, police playing football with the kids or buying the kids free ice cream cones and so forth. We need to see these type of things more often. You can find more reports at InfoWars.com. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit madein1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. We're on the march, the empire's on the run, and the InfoWars army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. 
Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com. this month, Forbes reported on the fact that California is using a black ops weather control technology to combat their dwindling water supply. Now, the Forbes reports that the cloud seeding will involve spraying fine particles of silver iodide into cloud systems to produce rain, much like they did during Operation Popeye in Vietnam. Now, the U.S. signed a U.N. convention which outlawed the military use of weather weaponry to apparently prevent the government from engaging in cloud seeding activities. But this hasn't stopped the state of California from dabbling in this technology. What could go wrong? <clears throat> Am I right? You know, well, critics of Operation Popeye claimed that the cloud seeding had contributed to devastating typhoons and all that flooding that took place in Vietnam in 1971. Well, back in 2011, we spoke with the father of weaponized weather, Ben Livingston, and he was directly involved with the cloud seeding activity in Vietnam. My name is Ben Livingston. I'm the first person to ever see the cloud with the intention to cause it to do military damage. I know I can say that, and I did it several times before the next person did it. Tell me what these clouds are we're looking at. Well, <clears throat> this, uh, these clouds were located up in the uh, southern part of North Vietnam, and we needed to make rain down on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, <clears throat> Highway 1. But there weren't any real clouds around. There were a number, this was the end of the monsoon season, but there were a number of these small clouds uh, that reached, barely reached the, reached the uh, freezing level, and by putting a small amount of, of uh, silver iodide in there, we got them to collect and start to build. And as they built, we just worked on the, the largest tower in the group until in very, just a very short time we and had the clouds that were. You told me ready. this cloud got 14 inches of. of, of well, this cloud, of course, this is all the same cloud. Most clear, top secret, eyes only, as high as you could get. I got interested in, in weather modification when I was a farm boy. Uh, I never could understand why the clouds wasn't bigger, had a little more shade, and was chopping that cotton. So I got in the Navy. Uh, I managed to get into meteorology school, and I think that's really where I learned the most of my physics. I was assigned to the Typhoon Squadron in, in Guam, where I served for three years as a flat, flat meteorologist and uh, meteorological engineer. From there, I came back to additional school at Texas a &I University down in Kingsville, and from, from Kingsville, they sent me to uh, the Hurricane Hunters squadron in Jacksonville, Florida. That squadron, of course, had just become involved in Project Storm Fury. So when I reported to, uh, to that duty station as a meteorological engineer, I was immediately uh, uh, designated the uh, military member of the Storm Fury Advisory Board. We were doing quite a lot of testing work out over the uh, test range at China Lake, California, where we uh, drop cloud seeding flares or silver iodide generators into clouds or just where we wanted to to see what the reaction was. And it was there when I learned for sure that you could really change a cloud by the amount of silver iodide you put in and where you put it. This uh, cloud here, the time it, from the time it started raining till it quit, it put out a little over 14 inches of precipitation. What did that do to the North Vietnamese? Well, it just washed all the roads out, <clears throat> and there was a bridge attached to a mountain that uh, that bombed and and could not get rid of it. This heavy rain washing out down that river took that bridge out. So you guys finally got it done. This was on October 13th. These are 
These are um, uh, <coughs> cloud seeding dispensing units on the side of C-130s. As you can see, they <coughs> these units held 52. These dispensers held 52 units. And under here on this F-4, we had these camouflage, so they looked like they were. Did you fly those? Yes. You piloted the F-4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're a jet pilot too, huh? Yeah, I did these. I did these for about seven years. You fly them all, huh? That's neat. And, and these were our own airplanes. The airplanes I had in my my commercial flight team business. See, I had a Duke and a turbocharged Duke, of course, and uh, sat on 310 and a turbo 210, and we built the flares that built them into the wings of our airplane so that they. Uh, cause as little resistance as possible, or drag as possible. And these right here, these are pyrotechnics that we've uh, cut in sections and fused them so that they could burn either in singles or a pair or cut half in two or cut in three pieces or cut in five pieces. So you can see obviously here, although these are, are dispensed in the vertical, they are essentially a horizontal cloud seeding device. See, that's how we made these clouds like in Vietnam work because we could take a cloud, uh, take a pyrotechnic like this, uh, that had a little bitty piece in it, and we'd fly by and just barely, uh, just barely touch the cloud with one one part. So uh, that kept from blowing the thing apart, blowing blowing the cloud up. But what we would do, in, like in, in Carla or Rita, those kind of clouds, we would uh, maybe use, this is just one, this is one cloud seeding device here, cut into five pieces. But in one like this, you may be flying 350 miles an hour, kicking one out every two or 300 meters, and just essentially seed the whole area on the, on the horizontal, and the whole top would blow away. Amazing. We were the first ones to fly into hurricanes for the purpose of modifying them, uh, if you will. That was Project Storm Fury. I began to, to be extremely confident that we could, could do whatever we, about what we wanted to with a hurricane. The Project Storm Fury had been going on since 1961, and they had already done, or had done two experiments, one in 61 and 63. Well, by 1964, when I was there in 1964, I wrote the plan and, and uh, started to have a track and a mission for every flight that was uh, on the hurricane cloud seeding experiments. So we had documentation for everything. Operation and product turn for you are very positive. This report said that we claim they should consider now if a hurricane heads straight towards Miami. Some wanted to continue hurricane reductions and the other part did not want to. It was a political football. And there are people that were wanting to do more pure research and less application engineering wanted to kill Project Storm Fury. So they built up an artificial barrier that prevented hurricanes from ever qualifying to be experimented or seeded for damage reduction. NOAA research people came up with uh, data that suggested that if a hurricane went through a certain little geographical area, there was no history in a hundred years that a hurricane had been through that area ever reached land. So they made a requirement that the storm must go through this area of, I call it the area of improbability, before it would qualify for a, a hurricane damage reduction attention. So after uh, about 10 years, no hurricanes went through there and and the people, uh, that is the scientists who didn't want to spend money on uh, aircraft reconnaissance decided, well, it's just too expensive. We can't wait any longer. So they killed the project altogether. Now you can watch the rest of that documentary as well as all of our other content at prismplanet.tv. Please become a member today and you can get an unlimited access to all of that nightly news, the special reports, and all of our movies and ebooks. 
That's it for tonight. Join us here again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central.